Welcome to Phoenix Seventh Day Baptist. Um, I don't want to start a fight or anything, but I I saw a post on Facebook this morning from obviously a Sabbath keeper, and and what they said was, um, it's not about Happy Sabbath. It's about Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. All right, and thought about that some more, and I thought, well, is there any reason why we can't do both? So um, I'll say both. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, and God willing, we'll have a happy day together. All right. So again, welcome. Let's pray together. Lord God, we are grateful to you for a special time, a time set apart, and a time that's holy, which means set apart for special use. And so we thank you for our gathering here. Thank you for safety of those who have traveled quite a distance to get to the, the Phoenix area this week. And we're grateful that some of them are here today. Father, bless all of our folks online and in person, our families. We ask for you to fill us with your spirit and enable us to worship you in spirit and in truth today. In Christ's name, amen. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. We're doing the scripture reading from Acts 24, 10 through 14. When the governor motioned for Paul replied, I know that for a number of years you have been a judge over this nation, so I gladly make my defense. You can easily verify that no more than 12 days ago, I went up to Jerusalem to worship. My accusers did not find me arguing with anyone at the temple or stirring up a crowd in the synagogues or anywhere else in the city, and they cannot prove to you the charges they are not making against me. However, I admit that I worship the God of our ancestors as a follower of the way, which they call a sect. I believe everything that is in accordance with the law and that is written in the prophets. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this glorious day where we can connect with you again and praise you and worship you. Thank you for our visitors today. Thank you for giving them travel mercies and uh, may you give them the same on their way home. And Father, bless uh, our uh, the giver of our message today and help us to truly hear it and to um, apply it to ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you read the, the Bible very much, and I hope you do, once in a while you run into a place, maybe a short passage, maybe a long passage, sometimes a single verse that's, that just jumps out at you. It's just so full, has so much to say, all packed it in together. Um, I came to a verse like that once when I was reading the book of Acts. Now, earlier we heard a few verses from uh, Acts chapter 24. Um, the governor who was mentioned in verse 1 it was Felix. We first uh, 
you know, this, this what we read is part of a much longer story. You first meet Felix back in the previous chapter where the story starts. And, uh, and of course, there is where it gives his name. The basic plot here is that Paul had been accused by the Jews. So what else is new? And now he was defending himself before Governor Felix in the city of Caesarea. Now, I've read this story, you know, probably quite a few times over the years. But, but as I said, one time, uh, verse 14, chapter 24, just, just kind of grabbed me. Um, let me read this verse again. Now, remember, the Jews accused Paul of being a troublemaker. And Paul said, no, I'm not. I mean, that's my paraphrase. And he, and so as he defended himself, I really like what he said in, in verse 14. Now I'm going to read from the New King James Version. But this I confess to you that according to the way which they call a sect, so I worship the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Now, Paul would not have been on trial that day if he hadn't publicly confessed or professed <laughs> that Jesus is Lord and that he's the Savior. You know, this was, of course, one of a number of times when Paul was arrested. And again, that happened back in chapter 21. And this particular arrest would eventually lead to his being sent to Rome, where eventually he died. But here in Caesarea, it was Jews who had accused him, and so he answered by showing that his faith was consistent with the, with the Jewish scriptures. We call the Old Testament, and we can see that here in verse 14. The first thing in this verse is, I confess, in other words, I admit that I worship the God of our fathers. And of course, when he says God of our fathers, he means the God who is revealed in the Old Testament. Now, who, who are these fathers he's talking about? Well, Paul's father? <laughs> Uh, his grandfather certainly can't be his father-in-law because he didn't have one. No, of course, the fathers were guys like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Goodness, you could include many others, Moses and David. And, uh, you know, these were the real pioneers of the faith. They found out who the true God is, not because they read a Bible, because God revealed himself to them. And so later in, in uh, history, later scripture has confirmed who God is. But it all goes back to the God of our fathers. I think that's an important thing for Christians to remember. In fact, one, one, what I think is, is a real good way to describe who God is, is something like this. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That covers the whole Bible. And, and it shows us one God. There is continuity from the Old Testament to the New Testament as far as who God is. In the Jewish faith and in the Christian faith, God is the same. And it says uh, in the book of Hebrews, talking about Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, the Muslims try to say the same thing about their God, Allah. Fact is, Allah and his 
final prophet fall way short of the God of the Bible. When Paul said, the God of our fathers, he was, he was looking back into the Jewish past. He was not looking ahead into a Muslim future. And so our faith as Christians is consistent with Abraham's faith and Moses' faith. And of course, Paul's and Peter's faith. We have continuity with the past all the way back. So, you know, many have tried to do this, but <laughs> it just can't be done. You can't keep inventing new gods and new, new religions. Nope, only the God of our fathers. Good enough for them, good enough for us. He is the only true God the God that we need to worship and serve. Well, as Paul worshiped the God of his fathers, going back to verse 14 now, he said here that he did it according to the way. That's the next thing in this verse. Now, my version has a capital W on the way on the word way. Is yours? Yep. Uh, actually, some do and some don't. <laughs> In English, it really should be capitalized. The idea is this isn't, this isn't just any old way. It's the way. Um, so it should be capitalized. Now, there are, there are a few other places in the New Testament where the word way is used in this same way. Um, I'll let you look those up sometime. In this verse, it says, according to the way, or it's also been translated as a follower of the way. You know, if, if you're out hiking in a forest and there's a nice path that goes on through the forest, you should follow the way to get through. You know, you, you can go off to one side or, or another and try to get out some other way. You know, uh, but if it's a thick, dangerous forest, you're asking for trouble. Just use the path, the way that's already there for you to get through. Now, a path like that doesn't happen naturally. In most cases, someone had to blaze the trail. Someone had to provide the path for everyone who will come later. And that's what Jesus did for us. Uh, sometimes he even used that kind of talk, like when he said, you already are thinking this verse, I am the way. No one comes to the Father except by me. Jesus himself is the way to the Father, to salvation, to eternal life. And here's, uh, here's another picture of the way that shows another part of what this means. Rather than thinking of it as a path through the forest, how about a way out of a burning building? In fact, that's one of the Bible's pictures of salvation, escaping flames. If this building is suddenly burning down and there's only one way to get out safely, we're probably not, not going to sit here arguing about which way we think is best, or even thinking, well, it's just not fair that there's only one way out of this burning building. We should be able to choose any way we like. Nope, if there's only one way out, we're grateful that there is a way, and we take it as fast as we can. In the book of Proverbs, it it says, there is a way that seems right to a man, 
and it ends in death. And Psalm, Psalm 1 talks about the way of sinners. Jesus' way is obviously better than, than that. He is the way out of judgment and death, and he is the way in to God's presence and eternal life. Are we followers of the way? Now, when Paul talked about the way here, here in this verse, he added a comment. He said, the way which they call a sect. And of course, they would be the Jews who were accusing him. Now, what is a sect? Well, whenever you, at least most of the time that I've ever heard that word to describe a group of people, it's usually not a compliment. Um, other translations of this, this verse, there are other translations that say either cult or heresy. At the time this, this book, uh, book was written, it was at least 30 years after the Christian for, for church started, probably more than 30 years. The church had grown like wildfire there in the Roman Empire, um, both among Jews at, at first and then Gentiles. Do you, do you remember back in um, Acts chapter 11 where it says that the believers were first called Christians in Antioch? Well, that was mainly the Gentile believers, not the Jews. The Jewish followers of the way still thought of themselves as Jews. Really, the only difference between them and other Jews was that they believed Jesus was the promised Messiah. So, for a long time, everybody thought of them as just another group of Jews, another sect similar to you know, Pharisees and Sadducees and Essenes and so on. Um, I read a book once that described Jewish life back in the second century. Uh, the, the author was a Jewish rabbi, and according to him, <laughs> Gentiles who believed in Jesus were called Christians. Jews who believed in Jesus were called Nazarenes. Interesting. I don't know if that's true, but I found it interesting. Even though they all believed in Jesus, they were, at least for a time, they were seen as separate groups. You know, we still have people like this today. There are Jewish people who believe Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of Jews as well as Gentiles. Um, I've heard them called uh, Messianic Jews. I've heard them called Jewish Christians. For the most part, they still think of themselves as Jews, and that's okay. Goodness, I still think of myself as a Gentile, or an American, or a husband, or a father. The idea is, whatever you are, believe in Jesus. Whatever you were, following Jesus makes it brand new. In this case, it wasn't long before the Christian church was almost all Gentile. Not all, you know, not everyone, most. And that's still the case to, uh, today. God has never forgotten the Jews. And not only do they still exist, goodness, that's pretty amazing right there. Not only do they still exist, but many have found their Messiah. And they found out, maybe to their amazement, that it was Jesus all this time. I mean, I don't care if they are sect. 
hey, you could say that we are a sect as well. I mean, you could say that American Christians are a sect of the American people. And like it or not, we Seventh-day Baptists are a sect of the Christian church. I think when we start talking that way, the sect becomes a much nicer word. I don't mind. After all, it's all about Jesus and not about us. There's, there's one more important thing that Paul said at the end of this verse. He said, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. In other words, the gospel of Christ agrees with the law and the prophets. Law and prophets, basically another way of saying the Old Testament. The Christian faith agrees with the Old Testament. Now, that's actually shocking to many Christians. Usually, when we talk about the Old Covenant and, and the New Covenant, usually we notice the differences between them, not the similarities. Um, some people even go so far as to say that the, the New Testament has completely replaced the Old Testament. Um, I suppose there is some scripture to support that, like uh, the prophet Jeremiah predicting a new covenant, and the book of Hebrews explaining what was wrong with the, with the Old Covenant and why we needed a new one. But unless your Bible is very different from mine, it still has the Old Testament. It's our scripture, not just Jewish scripture. And so, Paul, remember that Paul was apostle to the Gentiles. He brought Gentiles to God through Christ without making them become Jews. That's what, in fact, that's what his letter to the Galatians is all about. That's the main subject of that letter. Right from the time of Paul's conversion, he was apostle to the Gentiles. And that's one of the reasons we Gentile Christians love to read Paul. <laughs> but the same Paul affirmed here that the New Testament faith in Christ agrees with the first three-fourths of the Bible, the Old Testament. Now, one, one big part of this, of course, is prophecy and fulfillment. What the Old Testament predicted was fulfilled in the New Testament. Goodness, if, if we wanted to take the time, we could find many examples. Now, I mentioned Jeremiah earlier, but he wasn't the only one who talked about Messiah coming. And in the years before Jesus was born, pretty much all of the Jews were expecting Messiah to come, uh, based on Old Testament scriptures. Well, if he was supposed to come, why should it be surprising if he did come? Jesus himself affirmed the law and the prophets many times, and so did the New Testament writers. We need to focus on how, yeah. on how the two covenants are the same, maybe a little more than how they are different. God is the same God then and now, and salvation has always been by grace through faith. What do you think about Acts 24, 14? Is that a great verse? You might think, well, too bad it was wasted on a rank pagan like Governor Felix. That's who he was talking to. Paul should have preached this to the Jews who were familiar with the law and the prophets. 
or he should have preached it to Christians who followed the way. <laughs> well, actually, it does say here, in, down in verse 22, that Felix was familiar with the way, though he certainly wasn't a follower of Christ. Almost seems like Paul wasted this great stuff on a pagan governor. But it wasn't wasted, was it? Luke faithfully recorded it here in Acts, and God preserved this scripture for us and for all believers, Jews and Gentiles. He showed here that belief in Jesus is consistent with the Old Testament so that Jews can believe too. I heard once about um, a man, a, um, I don't know how many years ago this was, uh, a, a modern day, he was, he was a Jew, and a Christian friend chal uh, challenged him to check out the Christian faith. You know, uh, even to read the, to read the New Testament. So the Jewish guy said, "Okay, I will." So he opened the New Testament. Naturally, went to the to the very beginning, to Matthew chapter one, and the first thing he read was the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham followed by half a page of genealogy going back through Jewish history. And he thought, wow, Jesus is Jewish. <laughs> he continued reading more of the New Testament and became a believer. Jesus is still the way. He is still the one we trust us who, who we trust to get all the way through life and into eternity. That day, before the governor, Paul made sure everyone understood that it's about Jesus and what he has done for us. And today, it still is. Let's close with prayer. Father, Jacob said it was enough that his son Joseph was alive. Five loaves and two fish were enough to feed 5,000 people. When Jesus offered himself once on the cross, it was enough to save us from sin and death. Thank you for such a great Savior. And we pray in his name. Amen. God bless you.